Welcome, my name is Tatiana Cicchelli, and this is my video on how to do pigeon pose. So we're gonna do this from the perspective of a yin class. And in yin class, or in a yin um, flow, postures are done a little bit differently. So this is not how you would do this in a regular vinyasa class or a different, more upbeat, more um, yang kind of class. We're going to do this from the perspective of yin, which is about slow and um, letting gravity kind of do the work. So in yin, it's actually called swan pose. And for the reason, the reason being that if it has a different name, then people will, in their minds, associate how the posture is to be done differently from a regular class. So uh, this can be done from a downward facing dog or a hands and knees position. I'm going to do it from hands and knees. And I'm going to do the left leg first. So from a hands and knees position, your left knee would come to your left wrist. And then your left foot would make its way towards your right wrist to any degree. You can notice that my hips are still kind of over my left knee. And this is fine, but not very comfortable for most people. So to under your toes, drag your back leg back to any degree until your hips are in a comfortable position. Your foot might be in your right hip flexor. Your foot might be a little bit closer towards your right wrist. It kind of really depends. From here, you can choose to stay right here. This is a very common, um, I see this all the time. But for me, this stresses out my back, so I probably wouldn't do it this way. You may also tuck under your toes. It gets a little bit less um, active in the back leg. Some people like to stay here. Others like to come down onto forearms. Forearms is a really um, popular position. Some people like to use props like a block um, on the bridge of their nose with their forehead, like so. And then other people like to come all the way down. Some Common um, modifications would be to bring a block to anywhere. Right? So if you can't come all the way down, but all the way up is a little bit too much for your back, you might take some blocks and place them under your forearms. That's a way to do it. Sometimes people will also place a block under their hip, and that tends to help. And then other people like to do this from their back. So lay down on your back. Knees are bent, right leg, or left leg rather, comes into, so it's still the same position, and I'll actually show you this way. It's still the same position. It's just the back leg isn't back, and I'm not belly down, I'm belly up. From here, you can choose to stay right here, or lift up your right foot, take your hands, one to the back of your right leg, and one through the little triangle that is created, Hold hands with yourself, so my hands are connecting. Elbow to your middle thigh as you pull both of your legs in towards your chest. And I'll show you from the other side as well. So, from a hands and knees position, this time we'll do the right leg, right knee towards right wrist. Right foot towards left wrist. Back leg tucks under as you drag it back. And you can see that my foot um, it stays kind of on my hip, but you might also just inchworm your foot so that your shin is more parallel to the front of your mat. You can stay here. For this side of my body, I will tend to lean over to the right if I'm too much, so I take it about halfway. And from here, you can choose to stay right here or again, forearms or forehead. And that was pigeon response. Uh, a very common yin posture. Uh, it will hit your outer glutes, your inner thigh, your lower back, and your back hip flexor. And depending on the position of your head, you might even feel it in your neck and your shoulders and arms. 
I hope this clarified how to do pigeon pose. Uh, this is video one of a series that I'm planning on doing. So tune back in for more how-tos. Thanks. Namaste.